Okay, so I think we are going to stream. I think we're starting. Hopefully this is going to work. Ah, oh, I think I'm live. <laughs> hey guys, it's Heather Boyd Wire here and I've had yet another glitch with technology. This is going to be a total trial because uh, there is a delay. I'm going back to doing this the way that we did with the OBS software because I tried to go live on my mobile and it did not work. So YouTube has changed the rules of the game again about uh, doing uh, live streams and I can't do it from my mobile so I'm going to have to investigate that and I'm doing it from my laptop and my, um, my iPod. So we're going to see how it goes. Uh, hopefully it's not going to buffer. We should have better Wi-Fi than the first time that I tried this. So uh, I'm just going to see if I can see your comments because that's the other thing I'd love to see. Yay! Oh, you guys are awesome. I can't believe you put up with my shenanigans. So um, it's going to be hard for me to see the comments and the whole screen. I'm going to do what I can. I'm going to try to stay centered here so that my hands to go, don't go off the screen. We have Connie, Joanna, Clarice, and Kathy. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much. And I hope it's not going to buffer too much. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull down the chat a little bit. And the actually, the other thing I could do is... It's echoey. Okay, so you guys let me know if it's echoey uh, for all of you. And if that's the case, we'll just do a really short live stream and I'll show you a little bit about what I've been doing with the origami jewelry because I really don't want this to be irritating. And uh, so just let me know, all of you guys, if it's echoey on your end. And I'm going to show you some of these. Uh, designs that I've been doing. So I'm going to bring these over a little bit. I really should figure out what's going to be centered for the screen. So let me move up the screen. So what you're seeing here are some origami. Uh, oh good, these are centered. So these are some origami type things that I've done before. I'm just going to try to pencil off the area where I should stay on screen like that. Okay, just so I have an idea of where I should stay on screen. It probably is a little bit blurry, but let me know if it is also echoey. I'm going to push this up so I can see your comments. There we go. So Laura says it's echoey. So you guys let me know if it is really echoey on your end. There we go. And Joanna says it's fine, and Kathy says it's fine. So Laura, maybe it's something on your computer. Um, that's possible. So I'm going to try to keep an eye on the comments. So these are some designs I made a little while ago. So this is a fan, very easy design. I don't have a tutorial for this one, but I'll probably do one. And it's made with really nice Japanese origami paper. So as you can see, it's just basically a fan that I've kind of glued the ends uh, underneath. And then I wrapped the bottom with wire and dangled a little bead. So these are really cute. And then this one, I have a tutorial for this one. It's a book. And with little, you know, paper, and this too is made with artist quality paper and the origami paper. And I have a tutorial for this, so I will definitely uh, put the, um, the link to that in the description of the live stream. So if you guys are watching the replay, uh, I can put it in the description. So what I thought I would do today is I have some instructions to do some interesting origami. So this one... I'm not going to do it because this one I'm not really familiar with the five point star. Actually, it's a six point star. I thought that would be really cute as earrings. So that's one possibility. I'm going to put that at the side. I like the idea of doing a butterfly. So I thought I could try the butterfly. And there's also really cute little pinwheel that would be cute as a earring. Maybe I'll start with that one because that's pretty easy. And then also the crane because I have seen people that have done crane. Um, earrings. So I thought that would be cute to do. So let's go ahead and start with the pinwheel. So I'm going to take that and then I'm going to get some paper. I don't have a lot, like a huge variety, but I have some pretty ones. So why don't we start with one like this? And this is just like a, um, a piece of the Japanese paper. So I'm going to take that aside. You guys can get all kinds of instructions for origami, uh, uh, just origami in general on uh, online so I'm going to just go with the basic instructions and hope it's going to work and we can figure out how to put it together 
for jewelry. And the thing that you could do with this is also, um, I'm just going to get some, my computer's heating a bit up a bit, so I'm just going to lift it up a little bit. Off. I remember this is what happened last time I did a live stream on, I don't know, I might be going off screen now, so let me just see. This is what happened last time. Last time, yeah, I'm gonna be a little off the screen, but it's I had to put a little bit of lift under my computer so that it doesn't overheat. So hopefully it's not too noisy. So let's go ahead and try to make a pinwheel. So basically, you usually start with a square. Okay, so we're gonna start with the square, and then what we want to do. I'm just going to look in the instructions here. I'll just bring it over here. And it looks like what we have to do, oh, my instructions are upside down. And let me know in the comments if you guys have done origami before. I used to do a lot when I was younger. Um, I haven't done it for a while, but I really like, I know of some people that actually just do origami uh, jewelry and uh, and that's what they specialize in. I go to a show every year. It's called Comic-Con. It's like a show for people that are interested in anime and all that sort of thing and there's a girl that sells just origami jewelry that's really interesting. So for the pinwheel it looks like they just take a square piece and bring the ends to the middle and then it looks like it's you fold it in half again Okay, like this. I'm going to see if you guys are commenting too at all. And go like this inside. And let me know what the weather's like in your parts. We had a beautiful, beautiful day today. It's suddenly uh, springtime, which is nice. I think it's going to rain, but at least, you know, we had one beautiful day today. So there we've got these uh, pieces are all folded to the middle. And now we're going to open it up. And let's see what we do here. So now it looks like we need a little crease in there. So how did they do that? It looks like they just did like a little kind of corner to corner crease and a corner to corner crease here. Okay. And then this kind of looks like a little boat. What they do here, they open this up and it goes, yeah, we want to make this, these ends a little pointy. And if you print out some instructions, it's going to be a little bit clearer. I'd be curious to know if you guys do any of these, like if you find some other designs that would be good as jewelry. So we have this little end here. And then the same as this. We want to open this up. <coughs> same thing. We're going to do like a little, a little crease across here. It's a little tricky to find the right there and there. And then we're the same thing. We're going to open it up. Okay. Uh, okay, Kathy says we had snow in Nova Scotia. Oh, that's crazy. And Peggy said, yay, I made it before it ended. Yes. And Ashley, Peggy, you made it in plenty of time because we were late because I tried to live stream on my uh, mobile and YouTube decided to change the rules about uh, live streaming on mobile devices. I have no idea why they would do that uh, because it's tricky for me to go live on on my laptop because it's um, my laptop is overheating and I don't know how you know clear the images it looks a little clearer than the last time I tried it this way so hopefully it's good so next week if this works I'll set it up in a way that it's um, it's a little bit clearer so here we go we have this I'm at this stage of the game with the pinwheel and then it, it looks like you just kind of push these ends like this now this is way too big for any kind of earrings. So this is going to be the learning curve is what size you have to make it to be an earring. So see how this is way too big. So what I'm going to have to do is it seems sad to have to do this, but I'm going to have to open this up, see how big it was and make it, it's about two inches. So I'm going to have to make it at least half of that size. Cause if I want it to be small, like for a pendant or an earring, let's go ahead and make it smaller so let's just see how small we can make this so if I take another piece and I just you want to start with this kind of uh, across like this and then to get the right size I'm just going to get my scissors and cut it like you need it quite small so let's just go ahead and eyeball it so this is going to be so that's the trouble with the origami it's going to be very tricky to do 
and uh, oh yeah it's a pinwheel so it's very tricky to do when it's so small so this might be hard for people um, that have kind of mobility issues because it is very small in fact I don't even know if I can do it because it's so tiny I have a feeling that when people do this they use like really tiny tools like maybe little toothpicks or something to be able to do it but let's see the challenge is going to be to see if I can actually do this and then the idea is once once you um, once you have the design made you could probably varnish it or lacquer it to see if uh, to make sure that it's solid because if you're making an earring or a pendant you don't want it to be like really fragile so now we're going to fold it yeah I really don't know how I'm gonna do like the other some of the other trickier designs so maybe today will just be like a real troubleshoot to see if we could even get one design done and then I could do tutorials if I figure out how to do the other ones and then make them much more clear so this is like tiny tiny version of the pinwheel so same idea what we want to do now is open this up like the boat and here I'm just going to do the creases now because sometimes if you do the creases it's easier so we'll just do the one crease there and one crease there and the same on this side because it's much easier if you crease it so one crease there and one crease there and then if anything you know maybe you could even get your tools to help you out a little bit because just with fingers it's going to be really really tricky so we're going to spread that open Let's see if we get get that done very very tricky like the the other designs I showed you the the uh, the book and the fan are actually really easy because if um, Peggy you came on late so you didn't see them but this is the the book and the fan are much easier because it's just basic folding so it's a little bit trickier with these designs because you're they're quite precise so that's the trouble it's they're very kind of precise designs so they're much trickier to do so I think probably if you had some other tools like little little uh, toothpicks and stuff that would help too but maybe we can do it just with the with the pliers to get it out yeah definitely tricky I think that girl that makes she there's I was saying there's a girl that makes these at the comic-con she must go blind doing this because it's very very tricky so I managed to somehow get the basic form of the pinwheels so here are the instructions and what I'll do is I'll definitely link up the instructions uh, below the video and then we just want to bend these okay we're gonna bend these up to make the pinwheel and basically you just kind of twist it and bend it up so what I really wanted to show you guys is how we can go ahead and add wire to these to make some kind of design so let's go ahead and get some wire okay we'll get a little piece of wire and I think this would be quite cute if you if you laminated it like if you put some varnish or something on it so it's going to be solid and so we have a couple of choices we could put like try to put like a little bead in the middle let me just get a little bead probably don't need it too big so if I use like a little one of these little miracle beads there so let's see what happens if we just put a wire through okay we're gonna put a wire through like that I was thinking to put a head a head pin through but I think that I'm not sure how well that's going to work so let's just try to put and if we kind of put a wire through and then poke it in two places I'll just get a pin I have a stack of pins here because I've been working on a new design for a custom order for uh, these foot pins so I thought I'd show you guys those too this is for a friend of mine who's a reflexologist that's bringing these to one of her conferences so that's uh, that's really cute I'm working on that now and so now we're going to poke a couple of holes on either just to either side of the center of the pinwheel okay we'll just be careful with this the paper is pretty resistant but you want to be careful not to tear it so if we put a little poke at either side and hopefully by next week I'm going to figure out 
why I couldn't do the live stream from my mobile, but we're for now we're just gonna do it like this. So that's kind of cute. Like already it's quite cute. It's got like the little bead in the middle. And then to finish it off, what you're gonna have to do is push one of these wires like one way and then the other one push it up behind it. So they're both going the same direction. And then to kind of finish it, you're gonna to want to wind the small one around the larger one maybe a couple of times, okay, just to hold it in place. And then we're gonna clip the back. Okay, and then, so we have, let me just move it around like that. So this is kind of centered like that. And you could add beads up there if you wanted to, but I'm thinking it might be a little bit much. So I think I'm just gonna do a loop. So we're just gonna <coughs> bend it turn this around okay do a little loop to hang on to uh, earrings these would be really cute earrings and i will try to laminate them i have laminate them i have a like a little clear coat uh varnish type thing that i use sometimes on my paper crafts so i can try to use that to uh to laminate it and see how it goes so there we go so we have the pinwheel and that can be like a little a little earring or something so it's quite cute and then what I want to try to do too is I wanted to try to do the butterfly let's see how complicated that is so the butterfly looks like it's a little bit similar so let's try the butterfly maybe I'll try a slightly larger piece of paper though so what color do we use let's try this one and it looks like it's also a square so we're going to go ahead and fold it to get the square. We're just going to fold it like that and we'll give it a cut. And I think I'm just going to go with this size. Maybe I could go like slightly smaller. So if you want to go slightly smaller, just cut a little bit off the edge. That's a little bit more than an inch. So we're going to see about that. If it's too big, it's, it's all right. I just, it's going to be easier to demonstrate with a larger piece. So what we want to do is fold it in half. I have another really cute design for a butterfly that's more like a fan. So I'm going to show you guys. I'll make another tutorial with that uh, on its own because it's a super cute design and it's more for a greeting card, kind of an origami greeting card. But if I try to make it small enough, I can make it as a earring. So yeah, let me know if you guys are interested in more of the origami things. And I'll find a good varnish that we can use to um, to varnish them. I think that would be that would be good. So now uh, we have these. Looks like these ends are I'm just gonna fold that. So it looks like they fold these ends in again. This is sort of like the same beginning stages as the pinwheel. So let's see what we can do with that. I'm actually really amazed that I even got on the live stream because when they said that I had to, uh, I couldn't do it by mobile. I didn't even remember if I had my device set up to do the, uh, the live streams like this. Okay, so now what they've done is, okay, so this is there. So same things, it looks like there's, you have to do the crease from there to there, like in the pinwheel. Okay, so we're gonna go do that. And then this is the same, the, the bottom of the pinwheel. So I'm not quite sure how where we're going with this, but we're gonna see. So let's just, do these little ends okay we're gonna see what we're doing like that and we're gonna bend that up and as always feel free you guys to chat amongst yourselves in the in the chat because sometimes like when I get a little occupied with the project then I lose track of the comments so let's just go ahead and it's kind of wiggling around a little bit there we go. So there we go. We're going to go like that. So we have the bottom part of the butterfly. Okay. And then what do we need to do up here? So kind of looks like it's the same that we, they've done the same up here. So let's just try this again. Looks like they've done the same thing. So we'll go, go ahead and bend that. I don't know how they've made it different from the pinwheel, but I guess it's the final stage at the end, how you how you bend it. Okay, so let's just get in there. 
I haven't done origami for a while, so it is a little tricky. So let's just get that one going. And that side. Probably be easier to practice these larger and then do them smaller after because right now it is a little tricky. So let's do that one and then there we go. Yeah, it's just a little tricky to get it. Okay. And then pull it out. So tomorrow night we're going to something super fun. Uh, one of the art colleges downtown has something called Artists in Bloom. And we're going to, it's a fundraiser, and so what they do is they, they do, uh, the kids do paintings, live paintings, and then after, at the end of two hours, they have a finished painting, and they um, auction it off, which is really cool. Okay, so if this looks like this, I guess that's how it's supposed to be. And then uh, these ones, seven, I have to go to eight now. So, ooh, this is tricky. I'm not quite sure what this one's doing now. Hmm. This is a good question. Or maybe this is done with two. I'm wondering if this is done with two different ones because I'm here now. <sighs> not sure what exactly this one is doing. Hmm. I think I'm lost. Yeah. If I get too lost, I think I'm going to have to give up and look it up or something. Or maybe we open it up. Mm -mm -mm. If we open this up again, because uh, it looks like it's something like this. Let's just see. Yeah, that might happen that we get totally lost. The other cute thing I made out of origami was like a little kimono, and that was really sweet too. So that might be good for, for something like that. If we go like this, but see, I'm not, I think this might be a separate piece. Yeah. You know what, I think I might have to give up on that one because I don't think that one's gonna work. So I'm gonna put that one at the side and then we'll just look at one more and I'll try to figure out, in the meantime, I'll try to figure out the butterfly. And this one, let's try to figure out the crane. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do it, but we can give it a shot. And so I'm gonna start with a piece that's a decent size. And there we go. Oh, everybody's chatting. Okay, and I've never seen this. Yeah, it's interesting, eh, Clarice? It's something different to try. I bought, uh, okay, Joanna says, I bought some Miracle Beads off eBay and some were absolutely beautiful and some were terrible. Oh, no, that's not good. Um, Joanna, I have, I buy mine on Etsy, so maybe I could send you the link uh, to the, uh, where I buy my Miracle Beads on Etsy. Uh, okay, I made a fan a long time ago and covered it with embossing powder. Ooh, that'd be cool too. Very nice. I love it. So let's try the crane just because I've always wanted to make a crane and I've never made it. So let's just, we'll give it a try. And it looks like you just have to fold it every which way. Because often when you do origami, you just have to fold it in lots of different ways. So if we go like this and then what we have to do is, okay, bring these in, bring these pieces in like this. Yeah, I'm going to have to brush up on my origami because it's been a long time. Yeah, I know a lot of the origami starts with this type of thing, sort of like a basic kind of uh, square. So we're going to go like that. And then this one, we fold this. You know what this reminds me of? This reminds me of the design for the water bomb. I don't know if when you guys were kids you used to make those water bombs out of origami. I remember we used to make them all the time and they were really fun. Throw them out your window and stuff. I don't know if kids do this anymore. I think, I think, let me know if you have kids or grandkids that actually still do arts and crafts because I mean, I used to spend all my hours when I was younger doing arts and crafts, but I don't know how many kids do arts and crafts now. Like even my daughter Mimi, she's very creative, but she doesn't really like crafting. So usually when I do crafting, I do it on my own. So we've done all our bends. So now we have to open this up. And I think we have to, yeah, I think I've done something like this before where you have to open it right up. And let's see, open it up and bring that up. I think we have to bring it in like that. 
Hmm. Well, I'm not really super sure. Let's see. Bring that up. And that one up. I think you're supposed to go like this, but now I'm not quite sure what this does here. I remember doing this before when I was a kid, but now I'm not super sure what it's supposed to do. Okay, so let me try this again. So we're like this, like this. We do this bend up here. Yeah, I remember doing that kind of bend like that. And then this piece goes up like that and like that. Uh, oh yeah, this is working. Okay, and then that goes up like that. Okay, that's why you have to do the creases all the time because if you don't do the creases, the paper just does not cooperate. So that's why you always have to do those creases. So if we bring these up, I think this is also the design for a frog because I remember doing the frog when I was younger. So we're going to do this. So if you guys are watching the live stream and uh, you see me fumbling away, so what I will do is um, you could you could just fast forward to the parts that you like and I will link up the tutorials for the finished uh, origami ones if I do them in the future. So if we have like this, this one went up. Uh, Hmm. No, I'm not sure if this, I think this is how it was done with like that. Yeah, I think this is it. And then what you have to do is, yeah, bend this down like that. And that one, I'm not super following the instructions, but I think this is how you do it. So yeah, so we've got these little ends here. And then one has to go, you have to bend it up. Uh, yeah, this goes down like that, and that one goes down like that. So this gets bent kind of up. Here, let me just see. Yeah, you want to bend that up, and then this up, and this goes bent the other way. And I bet there are tons of tutorials on YouTube on how to do just how to do basic origami. And then it's just a matter of adding the wire and the beads to it. So if we have that side like that, and then this side, you need to do the same thing. We're gonna bend this to the outside like that. And then I just have to figure out what to do with the head. So we have, this will be like the tail. Okay, this will be the tail, these are the wings. And then the head is the same thing. You have to do like a bend and then you have to bend it down. I've even seen jewelry, like origami type jewelry made with metal. Now I'm pretty sure they're cast metal. I don't think it's metal sheets that people have folded, but that would be something fun to try too with the, with the embossing, um, what do you call it? The embossing uh, metal that I use for other designs that maybe I'll try that with a thinner metal, but you're gonna have to be careful that you don't um, cut yourself. So then it looks like you just bend the wings, flip it over and bend the wing. Now to make an earring, you would probably make, have to make this like half of this size because this is really pretty big for an earring. But just to show you what you would do, it's pretty cute. So, uh, oh, okay, I mean, look, okay, so Peggy says, my nephew loves arts and crafts, mostly drawing duct tape. Oh, duct tape, yes. I used to make tons of duct tape crafts. In fact, when I um, when Mimi was a little younger, I used to do a lot of uh, workshops at the local library, and a couple of my workshops were duct ta uh, duct tape crafts. And there were a lot of boys in the group, and we had a blast. Oh my goodness, I did that for years, making, uh, doing art workshops at the library and at schools. I used to go to the after school program, and do a lot of uh, workshops in schools. So now to attach a wire, you're going to need a decent sized loop underneath so it doesn't uh, poke through. In fact, if you wanted, you could probably put a little bead, but I think I'm just going to try it like this. So make sure your end of your wire is nice and straight, okay? And it would even help to cut it on a bit of an angle. Whoops. Oh, sorry, guys. I just banged. Uh, whoops. Sorry about that. I just banged my screen. So we're going to actually take the wire 
oh, I'm looking at the replay. <laughs> you, there's like a, a two minute uh, delay or like 30 second delay. So I just saw that crash. So uh, Clarice says, wow, it's very delicate. Yes, it's very delicate. And imagine if we made it even like half of that size. And Peggy says, I used to make duct tape wallets, purses. Cool, that's awesome. I love duct tape. So let's just, so we're gonna just find a good little intersection to stick the wire in. So if we poke it in there and then just feel it to make sure it's gonna go centered at the top. And then you're gonna very carefully poke it up. And yeah, there we go. So it did find its way up. That's why you wanna cut it on an angle so that it is going to uh, go up. And then actually this loop seems to have gone right up into there. So that's cool. Now, let's add some beads. This is way too long, so let's just clip it. So we're gonna add a few beads. And you guys know my favorite beads, so let's pull over my favorite beads and see what colors might go. So I actually have a really funky, well, I have the pink, actually it's, it clashes, so I'm not gonna do my bright pink. But let's go ahead and put maybe a little red bead on there and see what else I have. This is sort of like a pearly bead, that's not too bad. Ooh, that's kind of cool like that. And maybe a purple bead. Uh, sometimes I don't like it when it's too like symmetrical. So let's just put two beads for now. Let's, let's make life not too complicated. So let's just do the two beads. And then now what I'm going to do is just take this, bend it, back and then do our loop okay and let's just pretend this is about half of this size so it would be perfect for a earring because really these wouldn't work so well for pendants because they get bashed up but they could be earrings especially if you laminate them so there we go so there let's see what we made today so we made the little crane he's actually pretty cute so I just have to get the little pokey end in a little bit There we go. I shouldn't have to worry too much about that. So there we go. So here's the crane. Okay, I'm just going to pull this down, the screen down, so I can make sure I'm centering it okay. Oh boy, it looks like I'm in a cage, you guys. Sorry that you didn't get to, I didn't get to really look at you guys or anything. But so here's the, the little crane. Okay, so he's like that. I'll just have to place him down like that. And then the little pin, pinwheel super cute uh, the book earring which I will definitely link up below where you can um, find the tutorial for the book earring and the little fan so there we go there's the fan so and the fan that will be that'll be coming soon we'll do that another time so let me just I'm trying to see if I could bring them a little closer I'm just going to clip my screen Thing so I could get the these a little bit closer. Actually, I can no, I can't. Un I can't even unplug it because if I unplug it, the live stream will stop. So let's just go ahead. I'm gonna just cut this so I could bring it down. Sorry, you're gonna get a little dizzy for a sec. So here, let me just see if this is going to work. That I bring this closer. I'm just watching the screen to see if we can see. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> there we go, guys. So. It's a little jiggly, but hopefully you can see all the pieces there. There we go. So let me know which is your favorite of all of these. I'm just trying to center it so we could see it okay. And what I'll do is I'll take a photo of these and I'll put them in the Wire Art and Jewelry Makers Club on Facebook so you guys can see. And I'm just going to look at the comments here. There we go. Oh, can I see them? There we go. There, perfect. Yay! Oh, it's Kat's here. So Kat, sorry I started the live stream early today. So we did some origami. It's a little shaky because I couldn't go live on my um, mobile. So we had to do it this way, which is a little bit crazy because it goes in and out of focus. But I just want to thank everybody who stayed on the live stream. Thank you so much for your patience. And I'll be adding more uh, tutorials for how to do some of the origami things as well. And hopefully next week we'll have better luck with the live stream. And we'll definitely see you guys in the Facebook page, the Wire Art and Jewelry Makers Club, and we'll see you next.